Hey, 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 happy day. Sharon Hornells from here, also known as the Jam Grandma. I want to thank Nancy John for today's idiom or expression suggestion. She suggested that I do a little piece on Bob's your uncle and how that might impact growing your business or supersizing your business. Now, I didn't know what Bob's your uncle means. It's a United K. United K, United Kingdom expression, a UK expression or an English expression, and it means to wrap things up. After a simple set of instructions, to wrap things up, you, you give a couple of instructions and then say, and Bob's your uncle, or, and there you have it. You got this, there it is, or, and that concludes this, or, um, I guess it's just a, a wrapping up, concluding, this is the end type of expression that, it, and there you have it is the closest thing I can think of in in America or that I would use I'd be and there you have it or and that's how you do it or that's how you do it that might be a good one or you've got this or that's how you or, that's how that's as easy or that's the way it goes or something to that effect um, and it's one of those expressions that was first recorded in 1920 but the entomologists are mystified as to what it really means they have a bunch of theories there's been a lot of research into what it means but nobody has really come to a conclusion of well not where it, what it means but where it came from it means all is well the um expression well actually it's really interesting bob is a common name for any person my niece actually used to call everybody bob she went through a phase where she called everybody bob and none of us really understood it and this expression totally explained it and cleared it up for me because in England everybody's called a Bob you know and Uncle Bob could be anybody's uncle it was funny because she called all of her aunts all of her uncles all of her cousins all of her friends everybody was Bob for about a year I think it might even been longer but for a year for sure everybody was Bob and we tease her now she's in nursing school and so it's fun to look back and say oh my gosh remember when you called everybody Bob but what does it have to do with our businesses and growing our businesses I think it reminds us to make sure that we're giving clear instructions to people number one and that when we're done giving instructions we let them know that's it and you know do you have any questions make sure that they understand the clear instructions that we're giving people it also reminds us that we need to wrap things up we can't leave loose ends we can't leave things hanging we also need to not treat everybody like bob and treat everybody like they're the same because everybody isn't the same then one of the beliefs or feelings about the origin of this is that it might have come from nepotism where a prime minister in England actually promoted one of his nephews to an inappropriate political post that he went on to become prime minister after him. But the word nepotism actually comes and is derived from nephew. So there's some belief that that could be where it came from. And we have to be a little careful about nepotism in our businesses. Now, family businesses, I've had a lot of family businesses and I'm very upfront about, hey, there's gonna be nepotism in this business. I'm gonna hire my kids, I'm gonna hire my family, they're gonna be a part of the business. And luckily my, my kids and my family are pretty talented so there's never been an issue with it. But I think if you're gonna have nepotism and favoritism in your organization, you need to be upfront and clear about it. You need to not pit people against the relatives who are going to get an unfair advantage by having nepotism in your business. Um, but we need to take care of our own. That's why we have businesses is to provide for our families, provide for the people that we love and care about. So we can argue that nepotism is a bad thing and it shouldn't happen. But the fact is it does happen, especially when we're building our own business and when we're creating businesses for our family. Many of us who have our own businesses actually start those businesses to support our families so why would we not want our families to be a part of those businesses now i think you should have the same expectations for family that you do have of everybody else that's a part of your organization but that's just my opinion my kids have learned from practically birth that they were going to be hard workers and contributors to whatever they do whatever organization they're a part of so that's never been a problem for my personal family but i have seen it happen a lot in businesses I worked in corporate America for a quarter century and there were some really bad examples of nepotism in some of those organizations where people were brought in that were definitely not qualified and were put in positions that actually hurt the organization so you want to be on guard for that now anybody can learn how to do anything so 
it doesn't have to hurt your organization to have nepotism. You just have to make sure that you get the people instruction qualified and the expectations are the same if there's nepotism or not. Not sure why this went to the nepotism discussion, but it did. <clears throat> so you can't treat everybody the same in your organizations. We try to say everything should be fair and everyone should be treated equally, but they're not. People perform at different levels in our businesses and they should be treated differently based on the results they bring, based on what they bring to the organization. The more you give to anything that you're involved in, the more you receive in return for that in terms of personal satisfaction, in, per, in terms of rewards, in terms of everything. And most of our businesses are not set up that way, except in the area of sales, like commissioned salespeople tend to, what you put into it is what you get out. And they should be unlimited, that's my opinion. Salespeople that bring business to your company, their commission should be, shouldn't have a cap on it. If they bring millions of dollars of business to your organization, they should be compensated for that based on whatever commission schedule or, or thing you have set up with them. So there's all kinds of things that I never would have thought Bob's your uncle could lead to in a business discussion when I first heard the expression, not knowing what it meant. But I have to thank Nancy again for bringing it up because like any expression, any word, when we dig into it and we look into it and anything in our businesses as well, we can find a whole bunch of amazing ways of looking at it, ways of looking at what we do, ways of looking at how we think and just have amazing aha moments that are like, oh my gosh, I never thought of that. And that is how we grow and build and supersize our business. Have an awesome day. I'll of course be with you tomorrow. Bye. Find a way to use Bob's Your Uncle today, somehow in your daily activities. Maybe you're giving your kids some instruction. Maybe you're talking to somebody at work and then say, and Bob's Your Uncle. And they'll be like, what the heck does that mean? And then you can explain to them that it means voila, that it means, and there you have it. It means, and hey, there you got it. Now you know how to do it. And it's just a way to wrap things up in a fun and conclusive way. Take care. Have an awesome day. I'll be with you tomorrow. Bye.